This conference will now be recorded. Hello everyone, today's physics topic is transferring energy. So please uh, grab your physics copybooks, open this, and during the explanation, take your own notes. So uh, let's take a quick review of our last topic. Uh, in the last lesson, we learned that differences between temperature, thermal energy, and also heat energy. So you already know that the temperature is average kinetic energy of the particles in a substance. The units for the temperature are Celsius degrees, Fahrenheit degrees, and Kelvin. So uh, thermal energy or internal energy is the total energy of the particles in a substance, the measured in joules. In terms of heat, heat is the transfer of thermal energy. Uh, if you make a contact between two objects, which one of them is warm and another is cold object, uh, thermal energy of the warm object will transfer to the cold object. This transferring of thermal energy is called heat energy. Any substance doesn't contain any heat energy. They contain only thermal energy. But the transferring way of the thermal energy is called heat energy. So, uh, but how can uh, be this heat energy transferred from one object to another object? So we can think this in uh, another way. For example, we can take one object. How can this heat energy uh, transfer from one area, uh, the warm area of the uh, one object to the cold area of that object in one substance? So uh, it can happen uh, in the following processes, radiation, conduction, and convection. In each process, remember that thermal energy is transferred from hot to cold until both areas or both objects have the same temperature. This process will happen. Let's take a, 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 the, a look at radiation in detail. Uh, so radiation, uh, in the first uh, animation video, you are seeing that the radiator giving uh, the energy, this energy is coming from the radiator, it's called radiation. It's also called like infrared radiation. So there is a person which is next to the, uh, the fire, fire giving infrared radiation. Uh, if you stand uh, next to the fire or stand in front of the radi radiator, you will, your skin will get hot. Why? Because you are getting the infrared radiation from these objects. These are not only objects that give infrared radiation. All objects give infrared radiation. Uh, but sometimes you should mention that uh, objects uh, whose temperature more than zero Kelvin, you know that zero Kelvin is uh, or uh, minus 200 73 Celsius degree is absolute zero temperature. In this uh, temperature, uh, there is not any vibration of the particles. There is not any movement of the particles. And that's why, um, so uh, scientists haven't achieved yet this temperature. If they achieve this temperature, uh, the, this, uh, the, uh, that object uh, cannot emit infrared radiation. But uh, Surely we can say that all objects around us uh, emit infrared radiation because their temperature more than zero Kelvin. So uh, in the last animation, you are seeing that the infrared radiation coming from the sun to the earth, some of them is uh, uh, are observed, some of them are reflected. It's uh, like it acts like light wave. Uh, so let's look at its properties. Infrared radiation acts like a uh, light wave because uh, remember that uh, light, uh, light waves um, are transverse wave. Light acts as a wave. Infrared radiation is also like so. Infrared radiation is also a wave. And um, you can see uh, from uh, the last animation that uh, bet between uh, sun and earth, there is a space. This space is vacuum. There is not any particle. So through this space, through this vacuum, infrared radiation coming to the earth. And that's why uh, infrared radiation and light wave and travel through a va vacuum. But infrared radiation is not only wave that coming from the sun to the earth. Light, you also know that light is coming from the sun, uh, from sun to the earth. So uh, both of them uh, travel at uh, 300 millimeter per second in vacuum. Uh, they can be reflected and also absorbed. They cannot travel through opaque objects. Uh, for example, uh, if the object uh, has a, a shiny and smooth surface, 
most of the wave uh, will be um, uh, reflected. It doesn't matter if it's infrared radiation or light wave, they will be reflected. But if the surface is black or rough, uh, most of the radiation, infrared radiation or light wave, wave <clears throat> will be uh, absorbed and um, less of them uh, will be reflected. Uh, so, uh, as uh, like a light wave, uh, infrared radiation also can easily pass through transparent objects. Uh, so, here is the, uh, the um, famous experiment, maybe most of you already know that. Uh, the infrared radiation which is coming from the sun, we, you can collect this infrared radiation with aid of this magnifying glass while you are focusing this. Uh, you are collecting this uh, infrared radiation which is falling the mag on the magnifying glass in the one point, in one fox, in the, that fox, you can burn the paper. So, uh, infrared radiation are used in some instruments. One of them is thermal imager. With aid of thermal imagers, we can um, film the objects at night because at night, if uh, there is not any uh, luminous object or any source of light or any, uh, you, you know that at night, uh, the sunlight, uh, there is not any sunlight, but if there is a, not another luminous object like bulbs or any other sources, you cannot see anything around you. Uh, but with aid of this uh, thermal imagers, you, uh, the, you can see the objects at night. Why? Because uh, this uh, thermal imager captures the infrared radiation which is coming from the objects. For example, in the second picture, you are seeing that some uh, people, uh, people's pictures were taken uh, by this uh, thermal imager. Uh, that you are seeing that these uh, people's um, uh, the colors are different. Actually, the color are not like so in real reality, but inside this, uh, in this thermal imager instrument, their picture is like so. Why? Because each part of their body, each part, uh, each color show different, each color show certain temperature. So uh, here is blue, here is yellow, here is green, uh, oh sorry, here is red. It means that each part show the a certain temperature. Here is the right side of this picture. You are seeing the scale. With aid of this scale, uh, you can identify uh, the temperature for each color. So, uh, and um, that radiation is the first um, process for transferring uh, of heat energy. And the second process is conduction. Conduction. Uh, happens best in solid materials. So the key idea behind the conduct conduction is that uh, the dis this happening because of vibrating the vibration of the particles. So uh, while the when you burn uh, when you heat up uh, the one end of uh, the substance, let's take a, let's uh, imagine that it's a metal. This is a particles inside the metals. You are just uh, heat up one end of the metal while you are heating up this uh the vibration is spreading out through the whole metal why because first of all you are giving the energy to this part the particles which is located uh the over the source of um uh, energy start to vibrate and also while they are vibrating they make the other particles also vibrate and this process happening um the inside who uh, the object and uh, vibrate, vibrating of particles transfer energy to the neighboring particles, the neighboring particles transfer to the energy of their neighboring particles and this process will happen uh, till the end and, and the, at the end of this process the whole object uh, will be warmed up. Uh, so uh, the, uh, the, because of that reason we say that the conduction happens best in solid materials because conduction based on vibrating of the uh, vibrating particles so uh, but it doesn't mean that all uh, solid materials uh, uh, conduction can have uh, happen uh, perfectly inside all uh, solid materials 
Actually, it's not like so. Why? Because metals are good thermal conductors. The, uh, inside the metal conduct conduction process happen perfectly uh, because, for example, in the next animation, you are seeing that here is a frying pan. Uh, just this part of the frying pan is heating up. If you touch this, this part is also made up from that. There is not any plastic, there is not any wooden handle here. If you touch this, you will get hot immediately. Why? Because it's a metal. Uh, uh, while uh, the, the part which is over the so source of heat get the heat energy particles uh, which is located there start to um, vibrate so fast they give their energy to the next uh, the particles and they, they are also vibrating the another particles and with this way the energy is spreading out uh, through whole uh, frying pan so and that's why when you touch this you will get uh, hot energy um, and heat energy and so um, that's why metals are good thermal conductors. So uh, for that reason, uh, in the frying pans, uh, wooden uh, handle are used. If, it, it, if there were a wooden handle on this, uh, you will not feel any heat. Why? Because wooden, uh, wood or also plastics are good thermal insulators. They are not uh, conductors. They are poor conductors and also called they are good insulators. Why? because um, the conduction process happening inside them so slowly, not uh, as quick as uh, metals. And that's why uh, when, uh, if there, there were uh, the wooden uh, handle here, uh, the wooden handle on the, uh, on the hot frying pan remains uh, cool enough to be held by the hands. Uh, I'm saying again, if the object is not metal, if the object is insulator or wood, uh, it's called a, a poor conductor or thermal insulator, good thermal insulators. So here's some metal materials uh, which <clears throat> is written, they are conductors or insulators. First one is metals. Uh, obviously, you already know that the metals are very good thermal uh, conductors. Uh, Non-metals are uh, good insulators. Why? Because they are not conductors. The materials that are not conductors are called good insulators or poor conductors. So uh, the next one is liquids. Liquids are good insulators. They are not conductors. So next one, gases. Gases. Uh, but why you are seeing conductor insulators? Please use thermal in front of them. Uh, because we are looking at the, uh, how they uh, transfer heat energy. <clears throat> uh, metals are very good uh, thermal conductors, non metal are uh, good insula thermal insulators, liquid are good uh, thermal insulators, and gases are good uh, thermal insulators. Uh, and vacuum. Vacuum is excellent, good insulator. Why? Because uh, you know that conduction process based on the particles. There must be particles uh, for the conduction process, but inside the vacuum there is not any particle. So, and that's why uh, the conduction cannot happen inside the vacuum. So we call this excellent thermal insulator. So uh, here is the example uh, for uh, two materials. This conference will now be recorded. So here is the two uh, objects. First one is a chair, which is made of from uh, the wood. The next one is copper. It's a metal. Uh, they are uh, both of them are in the same room. They have a same temperature, 25 Celsius degree. If you touch wood, you will feel warm. You will not feel any cold because it's a poor conductor. But if you touch a copper metal, you will uh, feel that it's cold, but actually reality temperature are the same, 25 Celsius degree, the same temperature with the room's temperature. So why you are, you are feeling so cold when you touch uh, the copper metal, but you are not feeling so cold when you touch uh, the wood chair? Because the chair is poor conductor. It cannot conduct heat and energy. 
uh, the conduction cannot happen uh, quickly inside the wood, but in the copper, copper is a metal, conduction happens perfectly and quickly. When you touch the um, uh, copper metal, the energy from your uh, thermal energy of your body will move uh, to the uh, copper metal quickly. And that's why, uh, the, because uh, the metal is conductor, and that's why it will happen quickly. Because of that, uh, you will feel uh, cold when you touch uh, cold when you touch uh, the copper metal. Why uh, the energy will come from your body to the co copper? Because your tem body temperature more than 25 Celsius degree. If there is a temperature differences between two objects, you know that uh, warm uh, the thermal energy will move move from warm object to the cold object. So you are the object that uh, that give your energy to the um, copper metal, and that's why it will happen. So, <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> next one is convection. Uh, convection um, happens in fluids. Uh, let's remember quickly again. So um, radiation happens inside the empty space vacuum or uh, in air but uh, but uh, it cannot pass through opaque objects but uh, conduction happen inside the uh, solid it can perfectly happen inside the metals but convection happens inside fluids you know that fluids are gases and liquids so uh, this process involves change on density but how it can happen so uh, it's it's a pan uh, which is um, full of water. If we heat up this, if we heat up this like that in this place, uh, the particles which is located, which is moving here, they will start to expand. They will start to move around so fast. They will start to ga gain more kinetic energy because they are uh, the, the temperature is rising rising up in this uh, part. And they, they will get more kinetic energy because of the more kinetic energy they will start move around so fast they and this part the liquid uh, this part of the liquid will start expand and uh, at the end of this process they will become uh, less dense you know that less dense means that less dense uh, from sinking and uh, floating uh, topic you already know that less dense object will start to rise up but uh, more dense object will start to uh, sink and uh, the particles which is uh, moving here will get um, uh, less dense and they will start to rise up the, uh, the particles which is cooler and has a more dense they will start to sink and this process will happen continuously like this and because of that it's called convection current convection current. Let's take a look at again animation of this process. Again, the same process happening, the less dense uh, particles moving up, uh, the more dense particles uh, sinking, and this process happening continuously like this. So uh, it's called convection convection current. Uh, and uh, there is a, another example for convection current. It's a, uh, uh, you are seeing that we got here room. And here is a radiator. Radiator give infrared radiation, yes. Uh, but here, uh, the air which is around this radiator uh, start to warm up because uh, because of the radiator. Um, and um, the particles which is next to the radiator start to uh, gain more kinetic energy and expand, and they become less dense. Uh, less dense particles start to move. Uh, uh, the float and start to rise up and the more dense particles start to sink like this and this process will happen continuously again as before and it's also called convection current <clears throat> so let's summarize what we learned today radiation radiation happen empty space through empty space there is uh, not need any particle for the radiation to happen it can happen in empty space through the vacuum, but conduction, for conduction and convection, there must be particles. Conduction happens inside the solids. Uh, it's based on the, uh, the vibrating particles, but convection, convection happens inside the fluid, gases, and liquids. 
and it's based on change, uh, changing uh, density. So we can see three these three processes inside one thing. This is a fire you are seeing now. Fire uh, give us heat energy in the three way radiation convection and convection. How it's happening? You know that uh, as I said before, uh, any object uh, which have the more um, uh, temperatures than zero Kelvin emit uh, infrared radiation. Obviously, it's a hot object. Hot object will give more infrared radiation. It's giving us some more infrared radiation. So uh, the object which is burning here give us fire. Uh, inside this, the conduction process happening because of the conduction process that would start to burn and to, till the end uh, and and the convection happens because of the air particles next to this fire start to uh, expand and uh, become less dense, start to rise up and the cooler uh, and uh, the dense uh, air particles start to sink and this process will happen. And again, there is a convection current next to the this fire. So there is a, there are three processes happening uh, here. With eight of three processes, we are getting the heat energy from fire. 